Hi, this is also in today I would like to share how to fill shapes with pattern. If let's say we would like to assign a particular pattern according to the density input, that is better for us to label the shape according to their respective name. To name a particular shape, we just have to move to the name box and type the name that we want, then enter. So the name is already assigned to this shape. Now let's move on to the coding part. Go to developer tab, look for visual basic, and I'm going to put in the code at the shade to the button fail. So let's Start as usual, give a name. This is talking about pattern, so I will name as pattern. Since we have three shapes here, so we use for loop for i equal to 1, 2, 3. Then we use the could shapes dot range. We are going to call the shape using array. And the name will according to the label that we assign. So we have shade 1. Okay, this is shade 2. Dot cells. We have to start from the second row. See, so we use i starting from 1. So i plus 1 i plus 1, the first i is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, which means that we will start from the second row. And the name is fixed at the first column, so 1. Then we have dot fail. And today's lesson is for the pattern. For these patterns, for today's lesson, we are going to assign the pattern according to their foreground color the percentage used to represent the density so all together we have 12 options here from the variation 5% to 90% if we would like to know what is the value that is used to represent this foreground color this percentages we can visit the Microsoft documentation. The link is pasted at the description below. As we can see, 5% will have value 1, 90% will have value 12. All are integers from 1 to 12. So we have a maximum value of 12. So we will use this value to write our code. Let's move back to Visual Basic. For this pattern, we are going to assign weighted average for this density so that we can see the difference. Then we will assign the value according to the individual value over the maximum. Remember, when we think fraction we will we might result in decimal places as we can see just now all the value given by microsoft word are only integers so we have to use the round function so round the number so take the individual over the maximum so we call the value sheet two dot cells the second row, so starting from second row, again we apply the i plus 1. The second column, which is already fixed, over we call the function, so application dot worksheet function, and we have the maximum function. So maximum is for the range starting from sheet 2 dot cells the second row second column the range from second row to fourth row but fixed at second column so to the next the last one which is 
the fourth row, second column. So maximum is 12. So we have to bear in mind here, the range is from 1 to 12. If let's say happen that our range, the range of the data is too big, then it might result in 0, which is out of the range. To avoid obtaining a 0, so what we have to do here is assign another function, which is a minimum function. So we add the minimum function and place the value 1 as the minimum. Okay, we can try this later and check out. So remember, assign 0 decimal. Okay, done for the first i, then we proceed to the next i and so on. Okay, let's run and see. So we have different density according to the value assigned. How let's say okay if I change this one to eight thousand. So when we take average with the average, it might happen that we obtain zero. So let's check. So run. So as we can see, invalid. So what we have to do here is we can cut the code that we finish to assign the weighted average of the value and we assign a random variable let's say a a is equal to the value the weighted average okay so next okay of course we can make use of the application function the minimum function or we can use the if function if a is equal to 0, then we should now change A to 1. Otherwise, nothing happened. So we end if. Okay, then the button should follow by the value A. So we call the value and put it here. Okay, now let's check. So we run. So nothing happened. So it's already fixed. So now, okay, we change again to the other value, maybe like 5, 25, and 75. Okay, so the range is small, and we can see the difference clearly. As we can see, we'll change accordingly. So how will I say we want to change the pattern on cell change? Then we just move to the worksheet, and then under the procedure, we look for change. Okay, the one that not relevant, we can actually delete. Okay, then we just cut and paste it here. So this is no longer available, no longer relevant, then we just delete. Okay, now let's check how let's say we change okay, to 10. As we can see, change a little bit. Okay, this one 90. Okay, I change this one to 100. So as we can see, the different will change automatically once we change the cell. Okay, how let's say we don't like this color and we would like to change to the other color. Okay, then we can assign here. Or maybe we can change it one by one from the format, the four color. If let's say we don't want to change one by one, what we can do here is we can make use of this function. Okay, until fail. So we enter and dot so for color dot RGB. Then equal to so if let's say we are not sure what color density we have. We can move to the format, then we click on the fill shape and look for more colors, more fill colors. Then we look for custom, then here we can pick a particular color that we want. And we observe the value of the R, G and B. We just have to type the value here to the code. 
at here. Okay, so let's say we want, okay, let's simply type a value. Okay, right, we're back to the coding part. So we type RGB. Okay, the value we can assign, okay, according to our preference. So maybe like 125, 125, and 144, for example. Okay, now let's check. So going to change it. As we can see, the color is already changed now. Okay, then 60. Okay, so this will change automatically as we change. The pattern will change automatically as we change the cell. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Hope you like this. See you.